We are checking out G.I. Joe Super 7 Reaction, wave number seven. Let's jump right in. Wave number seven, the smallest wave so far in the entire line. Um, this is kind of like becoming a pattern, right? As I opened the last video saying the same thing. Last video, the standard release was eight figures in wave six, and now we're getting six in wave number seven. Granted, we did get, I believe it was nine exclusive figures, to give us our wave 6B, if you will. And I have to do a video on that. Um, but yeah, it seems like the waves are kind of like shrinking as we get to wave number seven. But this is a wave of five all new characters and one redo of a character that is a completely new look to me. I've never seen it before and I haven't seen the cartoon that it references. So that's really dope in terms of positives for the small wave number seven. But additionally... I think we're getting a clue in this wave as to something really big coming in the future. And I'm going to share that with you when we do our final thoughts. So let's look at the first half of wave number seven. Like we always do, we'll start out with one team and then look at the other. Let's look at our Cobras. Cobra Commander, the Funhouse robot version. The artwork definitely reflects the fact that he is a robot form of Cobra Commander. And that's really dope. You see the creases here at the joints you see the metal plate with the two big screws so that's some really cool detail even over here in the inner portion of his arm you see the screw so that's really nice detailing let's take a close look at the cobra commander figure he is all metallic and he looks so cool in person this is another carded review but one day i am going to unbox all these things i do have or at least I have a display setup idea. And then it'll take me some time to do it. Um, but he looks great in all metallic. We've got the royal blue metallic, the sky blue metallic, metallic silver. He's got the metallic silver on the, on the helmet. And in terms of like reuse, I think it's only the main torso that's being reused. Because the arms are new molds and the legs are new molds. But you've got the charcoal metallic here on the gloves, charcoal metallic on the boots. Really, really dope. You can see on the side, you've got the plate and the screw, or really just the molding for the screw, but the flat edge or the flat surface there of the plate. And you got the same here along the ankle and the knee, giving you that robotic look. This circle piece here on the chest, I don't know if it's a reference to the cartoon or if it's just like a rivet, but that is an additional molded piece that I haven't seen on a torso before. So not total reuse on this Cobra Commander. Very cool. And he looks absolutely great. And reverse side, Cobra Commander's bio. Very dope. As I mentioned, this is a six-figure wave, the smallest wave we've gotten so far, not counting any exclusives. And as you can see from the cross cell on the back, we're not getting a clue as to what the next exclusives might be either. I would imagine there's going to be a Target exclusive, and I'm wondering, are we going to get any exclusives at New York Comic Con this year? And next up, we've got our Crimson Guard figure, the Cobra Elite Trooper. Couple of slight changes here from what we're accustomed to seeing in the action figure form. This red seems a little more subdued than the really bright, vibrant red that, that we customarily see. But I gotta tell you, I like it. I think it works here. And it does reflect the animated coloring that we would have seen growing up on TV. You know, so I am digging that. As usual, you got really crisp paint lines. I mean, look at all those blue lines, the blue buckles, super crisp paint lines. We've got our rifle with the bayonet. He's got his backpack, really cool molded detailing there. And the bio for our Crimson Guard. Check that out. File name, top secret. And last but not least, on the Cobra side, we're sending out Buzzer from the Dreadnoughts. This figure is particularly cool for me in this wave because I never had Buzzer growing up, number one. Number two, we're getting the first Dreadnought, which means we're getting more. 
And the overall presentation of this figure, like his deco, he looks tough, man. He looks great. Like if you check out here on his shades, you got that little reflection there painted. And then if you look at his shades, they have silver metallic paint. So look how it gives you that reflective sheen. Isn't that dope? And all of the paint is super, super clean. This is a beautiful fig. The chainsaw gun before Gears of War's chainsaw gun. Super dope. And a look at his bio. File name, Dick Blinken. His name is Dick Blinken. And jumping right over to the Joes. Gabriel Kelly, AKA Barbecue. Close up look here in our artwork on his suit. I don't know if it comes across, but there's like a metallic flaking or sheen there on that black portion of his suit, even on the helmet. Really dope, kind of like a red orange suit color, three tanks on his pack, short holes there for the gun. I don't know if that's gonna reach to a hand, but maybe that's like really flexible or pliable, this hose. He does have a holster here for that gun. So I could see that going on his backpack and the gun going in the holster. Very, very nice touch. Cause I don't really know if that's gonna reach his hand. It might, but only if that stretches easily. And a quick look at his bio. General Hawk, G.I. Joe Commander. Never had him as an action figure. This is the only version of him that I have. And I think he looks so dope, man. I think he looks so dope. Huge fan of, of the armed forces and, 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 and just everything about that lifestyle. Grew up in the 80s, born in the 70s. So I, I, I'm, I grew up on military movies and, and learned a lot about history and stuff and just grew up really familiar with this military look as being one of many, and I dig it. He looks great in all his military attire. So, so dope. Let's take a close look there. Lots of molded detail all over his jacket. Lots of creases and wrinkles. Very cool. You've got three tones of brown paint. You got the dark brown. You got the light brown, and then you got like a medium brown here on the handle of his revolver on that shoulder harness that he has, very cool. I mean, that's a lot of different paint application. You know, and the fact that we get it so well applied and crisp, these are exquisite, exquisite five POAs. In my opinion, you got a little bit of silver touch there on the, on the shoe buckle, boot buckle, I should say, his nine millimeter. I will check out other reviews online to see that, to see if that helmet comes off. But the star is painted super crisply there. He looks dope, man. Thousand mile stare. Hell yeah, General Hawk. Quick look at his bio. And last but not least, my favorite figure in wave number seven, the G.I. Joe pilot, the air defense pilot. And I'm gonna tell you why. I think he looks great. The hose for his oxygen mask, the transparent oxygen uh, face mask that we have there, visor scene. We can see his eyes and his glare. I like his flight gear. Again, you have those really sharp, well-applied paint details throughout. You've got his wings here on his flight gear. How dope is that? Beautiful, beautiful looking figure. Beautiful piece of artwork. But that's not what I love most about this figure. What I love most about this figure when I saw it was that I think this figure is a clue that coming at some point down the line in the reaction line, we're going to get a G.I. Joe playset that is an aerial vehicle. And I'm going to explain to you why I feel like I'm a hundred percent accurate <laughs> with that hunch, right? Um, but first, let's look at his bio. All right. So we don't have a serial number here. His primary specialty is fixed wing aircraft pilot. So he's definitely not piloting some futuristic tank or, or submarine or anything like that. And it's definitely not a land vehicle that he's driving. No, he's gonna he's piloting a fixed wing aircraft, right? So that's a clue. Secondary specialty, defense and security. Then we go on and it says G.I. Joe pilots are valuable assets. They provide aerial support. 
And it goes on to give you some more um, interesting information about providing overwhelming firepower and providing essential air support. All right, so here's what I'm wondering. Is the G.I. Joe air defense pilot a clue as to the playset that is coming down the line inevitably on the G.I. Joe side, right? To combat the Cobra airship. And I've got some clues that I want to share with you. And let's just go over it really, really quickly. And I'll put some inserts in case you're not familiar with what we're talking about. So possible clue number one. Back before the announcement of the Cobra airship, I spoke about in the one of my reaction video reviews that the Snakelings kind of had like a lot of mechanics and engineers. And I was just wondering what was the point of all those figures unless they were going to give us a playset at some point down the line. I wondered if those figures were a hint or a clue that something was coming down the line. You can check that out um, in my playlist. And sure enough, we got the announcement of the Cobra airship. So I'm wondering, you know, is that parallel kind of a clue? You know, here we have pilot for a vehicle and place that does not yet exist. Second possible clue, the back of the bio on our pilot, it's not just a pilot. His, his, his bio is very, very specifically detailed to match a certain type of real life vehicle equivalent. And it also, interestingly enough, the bio matches very specifically to a, a scene inside of the G.I. Joe episodic TV movie, uh, Pyramid of Darkness. So that, I think, is a very interesting coincidence, or is it a clue? And in terms of the criteria that I think the future playset has to meet, well, I think it has to match the criteria that the Cobra airship has, right? The Cobra airship is cartoon-based. The Cobra airship has never been produced or released previously or even shown in a concept toy form in the past. And in terms of what kind of Joe playset we might get, well, the Cobra playset is an air-based aerial playset. So, I mean, it, does, it doesn't have to dictate what the Joe playset is, is, but, you know, based on what we have before us, I think that that clue might suggest we're going to get an aerial playset from the Joes. So that having been said, I did a little bit of research. First off, I said, you know what? Let me see if there are any, you know, if there's a history of G.I. Joe air defense vehicles or concept vehicles. Well, sure enough, I found two. One was a released vehicle and it was named literally air defense. And as you can see, it's a land based kind of like a rocket turret kind of thing. I'm not really sure what to call it. And the second toy was a prototype concept that was never released. And in this case, also, you see it doesn't fly. It has wheels and you got to drive it. So it doesn't have a need for a pilot. Um, and, but it fires rockets and stuff like that, right? So I'm just identifying features there. So I continue to do my research. And as I continue scrolling, looking for G.I. Joe air defense vehicles or prototype concepts from the past, I came across this other vehicle here. And as we can see, this one is also a land-based wheeled vehicle. It doesn't fly, um, but it has that similar feature of firing rockets or, or, or cannons into the sky, right? So I thought to myself, all right, dead ends here. Let me look for some real U.S. military air defense vehicles, right? And sure enough, as I was scrolling through my search in Google, I came across this image. And that vehicle isn't identical to the vehicle from the, the toys that we saw, but it to me, it looked a little similar. And the fact that it was being loaded onto a C-130 or a, C1, uh, a C-17, I can't really tell, that to me was very interesting because of the research that I did when I was watching the Pyramid of Darkness. If you blink, you will miss it. If you go to the bathroom or something like that, you're going to miss it. If you, if you look down to chew from your sandwich and drink from your soda, you're going to miss it. But there is a short 10 or 11 second clip in Pyramid of Darkness at exactly one hour, 25 minutes. And it shows a large troop transport with two Joes about to parachute out of it into a combat area. And all of that matches what's going on in the back of this character's bio. Go back and take a look. So I thought that was interesting in terms of shape. Now, we don't have the same amount of propulsion jets. You know, here we only have two. 
And on the real life equivalent, you'll typically see four, but it's a cartoon, you know, they took a little artistic license, who knows? But this vehicle is the closest one that I could find in the entire Pyramid of Darkness movie. I also watched Revenge of Cobra. I also watched Mass Device. Uh, and none of those have anything even close to being an air-based vehicle that is also cartoon movie based that was never produced, you know? But this particular airplane here in this 10 second clip, it meets all that criteria. It also matches the back of the bio so very, very interesting. Um, I, I'd love to hear what you think about my theory and, and my wondering about this possibly being a hint of what's coming down the line. I hope I hope I'm right. I'd love to get a C-17 Globemaster or a C-130 Hercules. That would be so boss and badass, bro. Oh, man. Heck yeah. All right. Final thoughts on wave number seven. I think it's such a strong, dope wave. And it's it to me, it's also an indicator of, of how the strength of the line. And man, we're really getting deep in the number of figures right now. That's awesome. I love the fact that we got this wave early. You know, it, it went up for sale in August and I got it on September 1st. So that's super dope. And that means to me, hopefully, that there's enough time, four months left in the year, where we might get another uh, release of something special from G.I. Joe before the, before the calendar year is done. And heck yeah, man, this was a lot of fun as always. I hope you're able to keep coming back and share the experience of collecting toys as an adult. Until next time, everybody. Yo, Joe, it's playtime.